Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about listen and speak up. So <laughs> what made me want to talk about listening and speaking up is I have been going through some sort of mental warfare lately, and I've been fasting, so it's been helping me see a lot clearer. Like a lot of the things that I had questions for, I didn't do the fast because I wanted answers to certain questions that I had. I mean, there were things that were on my mind. And God knows like what your concerns are, things that are are troubling you. And he wants you to have a joyous, peaceful life. He wants you to have the answers that you need to be able to discern whether things are going to be good or bad for you. And for me, before before I get into everything, let me just say I just finished working out. So that's why I have like this my little this is my little bag that I take when I go work out. And when I get up in the morning, you know what I do? I put on like workout clothes. So I have no excuse. I'm already dressed for the occasion. So <laughs> if I don't work out, it's just laziness. Like if I'm already up, if I'm already moving around, like let's say I was off or something else. If I'm off of work, if I'm before I get started on my business stuff, what I'll do is I'll get up and I'll start doing exercises right away. Like, of course, you know, I brush my teeth, rinse, tongue scrape, floss, Listerine or whatever the the type of Listerine is that I use now is like some kind of some doctor something is what I use but it is the best like mouthwash I've ever used in my entire life like if you are concerned about like I don't know bacteria building up or like gingivitis or if you want to like have really good teeth health you see like how my gums and my teeth look they look like this because I go to the dentist regularly and I brush my teeth morning and night and I floss and I I tongue scrape and I I do like that thing I also have lozenger lozenges lozengers I don't know what they're called but they're the things that you eat that you can like you can take one throughout the day and it helps with dry mouth it helps with um, it freshens your breath. It does like a bunch of different things for, for your dental health. And so dental health to me is so important because not only do I want to take care, I know it's like a, <laughs> it's like a P PDA or something, but no, I'm not, I'm really not. <laughs> PSA is what I mean, public service announcement. I don't know what the other one came from, but okay. We know it's not that, <laughs> but, but it's really important for me to take care of my health. Like outside and inside seriously and I know like people joke about it and they try to make it seem like it's just like an option or something but it really is super important for me to take care of like my body like my skin I want my skin to be as soft and smooth as possible like if if I could get my skin to feel like a pillow I'm gonna do it so <laughs> so I want to make sure that like even if I have like a you might see me every once in a while. I don't have one today, but the other day I had a pimple, right? I don't know where it was. It was like right in the middle of my forehead. It, it's always right there for some reason. I don't know why. It's like always that spot. <laughs> and so, so I'm like, okay, well, I have like this stuff that I put on it and usually it gets rid of the pimple. Like if I see one on there the night at night, it's usually gone the next morning. So that's why when you see me do these videos, you don't usually see me with like blemishes or pimples or anything like that, because I literally, as soon as I see it, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, not today. <laughs> so, so yeah, taking care of like my skin and my teeth and my body and like putting nutritious foods into my body and of course you know I eat unhealthy every once in a while and things like that but I really intentionally try to make sure that I take care of my mind my body and my soul like my soul is constantly being fed with the word is constantly fed with scripture gospel music like sermons whatever it is that I need to feel my soul because the world is out there always constantly trying to attack and minimize the things that we do and make us feel like we're not good enough and the devil or God would put certain people in your life. But if you don't look out for yourself, if you don't honor and respect yourself, the person will treat you exactly like everyone else, because people are going to do exactly what it is that they can do to get away with exactly what it is that they can get away with. If there's an easier solution for other people, they will take that. It it happens with your kids. It happens with family members it happens with friends it, it happens with potential partners or people that are partners because we are the ones that set the standard for our lives 
And sometimes it's easy to forget that. Like for me, I get so busy sometimes that I just let stuff slide, not because <laughs> not because I want to be like walked all over and for people to think that I'm weak or for I mean, even though I am the weaker vessel, but being a weaker vessel does not mean being allowing someone to take advantage of me. And so for me, I really, truly just sometimes get so busy, I don't even realize like I'm allowing people to walk all over me or take advantage of me. And I mean, if I notice something, if I'm not, if I'm, let's say I'm reading a book or I'm working on this big project that I have, if somebody texts me and the first thing I'm thinking is just text them back, move it out the way and keep, keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not thinking about the things that they haven't done, the things that they're going to do, if they're doing this right, if they're, I'm like really focused on myself. I'm not focused on what the other person is doing, which is something that I really have to start paying attention to because people I've noticed people take that as a clue that I don't have standards or honor myself or respect myself or I will just settle for anything or I would be desperate enough just to have someone in my life. Like, I don't need anyone in my life that God doesn't want in my life. If somebody doesn't feel like I'm worth it, if they don't want to put forth an effort, if they feel like they can't be consistent or they can't be communi communicative, then they don't uh, they don't get to be in my life. They don't get to be a part of the activities that I have in my life unless someone else invites them. They don't get to do anything. And even if I'm just trying to be a kind person, and I'm like, yeah, a group of us are going this place to do blah. Like, I don't think of that as a I'm giving them a privilege, but I'm going to start thinking of it like that because I don't want any person to think that that makes me weak, that I'm just this person who's just gullible, who is naive, who just wants to put up with anything. Like, honestly, once somebody does something that I don't approve of or does is not about that life, I'm honestly not thinking of them in that way at all and, unless they prove themselves. So, I mean, I could be nice and lead them with love and kindness, but that does not mean that I want to be disrespected or dishonored or they have a chance. Like, you don't have a chance unless you prove that you're going to get a chance. So, I mean, I could be nice and cordial and everything else, but that does not mean that I'm weak. That does not mean that I want someone to walk all over top of me. That does not mean that you get a chance to hurt me. That does not mean that I'm allowing that toxic behavior in my life because inconsistency breeds dangerous behavior, which breeds toxicity, which breeds untrustworthiness of an individual. So if you really feel like you want to be a part of my life, then you need to step up to the plate. You got to do whatever it takes. And I know not everyone's going to be able to do that. Not everyone's going to feel like I'm worth it. And that's on you. Like, the people who are supposed to be in my life are going to be there regardless whether you step up or not. So either you're about that life or you, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. And I mean, it seems a little harsh, but sometimes you got to be harsh. And I'm not saying it in a cruel way. I'm not saying it in a nasty way. I have not raised my voice at all. I, I mean it from the bottom of my soul. And so when it comes to family, friends, whoever it is in my life, if they don't respect me, if we're not mutually respecting each other, if it's not mutual edification, if it's not mutually beneficial, then I don't see any reason why you should be a part of any of the blessings that God's about to give me in my life or my life, period. So if I'm blessed, you're not going to eat off my blessings because you feel like you could use me. Like, that's not what's about to happen. And so you could, like, feel like you won over in your area and everything else, and that's fine. And there may be things that I do wrong because I'm not a perfect person, but I absolutely <laughs> am not going to allow any person to feel like I am the type of person who does not honor and respect myself. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I care what, what God thinks and I care how I treat myself. And I am not settling for anything less than what God has for me. Nothing more, nothing less. And I say nothing more now because I think some people might have watched the other video, but I say nothing more because God is the God of abundance and anything he wants to give me in my life is a true blessing. It's going to be so huge that I can't even fathom or imagine. So if God is saying that this is me at my highest potential, everything that he's willing to give me, 
then that is more absolutely over overly more than enough. Like it's it's so high up there. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And and again, I'm not saying this to be nasty to any person. I don't ever want to treat anybody disrespectfully just because they didn't respect me. I'm I mean, respect is given, you know, so it will be a mutual thing. I can be cordial and I can respect myself. Will I respect you? Probably not. Will I will I be loving and kind towards you? Absolutely, because that's what God would want me to do. And I'm not going to be a nasty human being no matter how someone treats me because I know who I am. And I don't want to be that type of person. I don't want to be looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, why did I treat that person like that? Just because they decided to lower themselves. I can't allow myself to be at that level anymore. I'm not there. And so any person that enters into my life has to know that. And I mean, (laughs) some people will say stuff and they'll say, oh, they'll make up like an excuse or something. And I'll just say, okay. I mean, I don't mean it in a rude way or anything. I just say, okay, and keep on talking. And I really probably should say, you do what you feel like you have to do and I'll do what I have to do or something else. But I just don't want to turn it into a thing and make them seem like they have that much energy or control over my life because God's the only one that controls my life. So when people make up excuses, even though I don't like, make a big fuss about it and raise my voice and do anything over the top, I pay attention to people's actions. And so when people aren't about that life, when people don't step up to the plate, when people say they're going to do something and they say they'll try or maybe or something like that, that's not you showing an effort. That's you trying to find a way out to do the bare minimum. And it's unacceptable. And so (laughs) so for me, when I say, okay, I don't mean like, okay, I mean, like, okay, we're going to see. If you're about that life or if you're not. And when you no longer have access to me, it's not because I'm being cruel or mean or whatever else. It's because I have to protect myself. And either you respect me and you treat me the right way or you're not a part of my life. That does not mean I'm going to be mean. That does not mean I'm going to be cruel or nasty or keep a record of wrongs and just turn it into some sort of sick game like. I have way too many things to do to waste my time on trying to get back at someone when I have other things that God wants me to do in my life. So I really have to be intentional with everything. So I called this video. Oh, yeah. And because I'm about to work out, I don't have any makeup or anything on. So this is just this is me. (laughs) So it is what it is. But I mean, I'm not saying that anything's wrong with no makeup. I used to just not wear makeup at all. And I might do like mascara or something. And when I say makeup, (laughs) I can't wear, I can't wear regular makeup on my skin because it breaks me out. So I don't wear like foundation anyways, because I've tried like CC creams, BB creams, and my skin's already like whatever. So the only reason I would wear makeup is just to do the highlight thing, which I usually don't do. Sometimes I try it out, but I cannot use any brushes. I can't use sponges. I can't use any of that on this section of my face at all. Right here, I could probably do something. Sometimes I will break out right here or right across my forehead or like through here. I'll start having little fine bumps everywhere as soon as I put makeup on. So I can't wear makeup makeup. What I would do though, is I would do like, um, I would tint or get my eyebrows micro bladed or whatever it's called when they do like the shading and it's kind of like a tattoo for your eyebrows or whatever. I might do something like that or I'll do, you know, like um, eyeshadow, eyeliner and mascara. But this section of my face is the only thing that usually has makeup when you see me in my videos. Everything else is just normal, but it looks totally different because my eyelashes stand out more when I have mascara on. But that's besides the point. I just wanted to point that out because I think it's important to be who I am regardless. Like, (laughs) like I really, like, I love these braids. I really do. I haven't had to do my hair at all. All I had to do was just like put in a ponytail 
put it in a low ponytail, wear it down, wear it in a ball. Like, and it's literally, and, and twirl it. Like I'll, I'll spin it and then I'll just put it in a ball, put the hair bow on. It's literally like 30 seconds <laughs> and I'm done and I love it. And it's not that my natural hair couldn't do that, but it won't turn out the way that I want it to every time. It'll turn out differently every single time I do it. So I, I love my curls. I really do. And I love my hair straight and in braids and everything. So it's not like one is better than the other one. It's just that I like all these different styles. And I and the less things that I have to do to my hair, the, the better I feel. Unless I'm like in one of my, my moods where I just want to do my hair in some kind of special style or something like sometimes I'll see something on on YouTube or like on Pinterest or something I'll be like oh that style is cute let me try that but other than that no <laughs> I don't I don't have that extra time I could make extra time but I don't want my hair to be something that is something extra that I have to put extra attention to I just want to focus on my purpose and God God and my purpose I want to focus on anything else. Everything else that's going to happen in my life is going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. So for me, I, God has been telling me in this fasting season to listen and speak up. And I would say I have been speaking up, but I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to. I mean, I did have a moment where I got to speak up for myself in one area. And honestly, it just was because I had an extra moment to do it. And I felt like it was important to do it. And I just, I really, I really have been listening more in this fasting season. I've been, I've been hearing God more. I've been spending more time with God. I've really been focusing on what it is that God wants for me. And I haven't had my crutches around me. Like God allowed me to have this time to not have like, all of the things that I would usually lean on in the past. And for you, it could be something like, like I said, like substances, it could be a person, it could be, it could be a job, it could be anything. And so when God removes all those things from your life, it's easy to see where your focus is. It's easy to see where, where your heart lies. It's easy to see the things that really truly matter to you. And for me, it really did open my eyes and it showed me the areas that I thought I had faith in, I really didn't have faith in those areas. I had something to lean on, to to prop me up in the meantime. It wasn't that I was faithful during that time. I was so busy, focused on other things. I just didn't have time to think about it or to just solely rely on my faith. And now, man, this fasting has been opening my eyes so much. I've been so blessed and I still have about 10 days <laughs> of fasting and it does get hard because as soon as I said I was going to fast like day three there was a whole bunch of images of the thing that I, I'm fasting from and I was just like oh my gosh no <laughs> and it's so funny so at the end of the fast or like if God puts it on my heart I'll tell you what I fasted from but I didn't fast because I know some people will fast and they'll say, I'm fasting for a husband or I'm fasting for a job or something like that. But my intent for fasting was to get a closer relationship to God, to trust him. <laughs> okay, God, you're funny. Okay, to trust him and lean on him even when I didn't have anything else around me distracting me. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> and to really, truly just lean on him to follow his lead, no matter where it was taking me, no matter if I had an answer or I didn't, to really truly strengthen my faith, to strengthen my relationship with God, to to stay focused, even on an even if situation, even if God didn't give me the relationship that I wanted or the job that I wanted or the friendship that I wanted to to keep, even if he didn't allow me to have like the house that I wanted or whatever else. I knew that whatever God had, I wanted to to be content in knowing that regardless, if if God didn't do it, I would still be fine. Regardless if I had the person, the job, the friendship, the car, the material object, whatever it was, I wanted to really solely believe 
that I wanted to have an even if mindset. And I was fasting for the even if, even if I don't get what I want, even if I don't get the car, the house, the job, the person, the whatever else it is, I wanted God to be number one. I wanted to keep God on my mind, my heart and my spirit. I wanted to solely be focused on God. I wanted to have hope and faith, even when it seemed like hope was was nowhere, even when it seemed like it was hard to stay faithful. And I have had some tests. And, and since I started fasting, like the adversary has been dangling things in front of me and like constantly bringing up people's names and <laughs> constantly showing me dreams of people. And I don't know if Satan's in my dream or if it's just God's way of telling me that regardless, everything's going to be fine. But it has been, I have been so tested, like things that really should have should have broken me. I mean, I had moments of weakness. I really did. I had moments where I was like, "Woo, I don't know how I'm going to make it out of this one. (laughs) But I called on God and God made a way. Like even when I couldn't see a solution, he made a way out of no way. He really did. And I know it's so cliche to say that, but it's so true. And I really was just like, oh my gosh, like I felt like my hope was dissipating. I really felt like It felt like as if I couldn't see myself finishing or getting out of this test or out of this storm. I really felt like closed in. I felt like so reliant on certain things, like things that I relied on in the past that I really felt like, oh my gosh, you know, I haven't heard anything from God. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I still felt peace, even though I was concerned. I still felt peace in that moment. I felt like Even though I was concerned, even though I couldn't see how it was going to work out, even though I didn't know what was going to happen next or I mean, you never know what's going to happen next. Even though I had had no control over, you know, my career or the house, the cars, the whatever else, I even though I had no control over the person or anything, I still felt peace. I still felt a calm, a sense of calmness, which is weird, like. I've never felt that before. I've always felt worried, like super worried or stressed out or like, oh my gosh, I don't know how it's going to happen, you know, and I was so worried about everything. And really, even though there was so many things happening around me that were so horrible, like I had, I don't know if I, I guess I can share this, but I had this person say some really cruel things I mean really try me and you're probably like why do you still have contact with this person but it's regarding business like we have business together so it's not that I can avoid this person it's someone that I will have to constantly communicate with until for the next however long and so you're probably thinking well couldn't you get rid of the business or something else it's it's not that easy. And so they, they really tried it. (laughs) They really did. Uh, And God gave me the strength to stay calm through it all. Like he it's only God, I promise you, because if it was me years ago, (laughs) I don't know if I could have handled the situation that calmly and that with such poise and class and to be such a lady in that situation, I probably would have, would have been ratchet. (laughs) And thank God he delivered me from that because, oh my gosh, it would have been a nightmare instead of it being something that was easily resolved or something that I can, can try to find a solution to, or knowing that God was going to work it out for me. I would have been hectic. I don't think I would have been able to communicate as well as I was able to. I don't think I would have been able to ask for and say the things that I needed in the way that I needed them without it being some sort of thing. And so God really is so amazing. The way that he works on in my life, the way that he moves things, the way that he does things is just so, so amazing. Like I had a, a day where I just felt like I felt calm, but I just was like, Uh, (laughs) I was like really in my feelings and I know God was over there like 
this girl don't even know how blessed she is right now. Like, she don't know all the things. If I hadn't stopped those three things from coming to attack her, like, it, she would have been all, all right. <laughs> like, he really, he really gave me so much grace, even though I was in a mood. I really, I really was feeling, I was in my feelings for real. Like, <laughs> I was just like, it's just not fair. <laughs> Like, you know how that kid just got their arms crossed and they're just like, it's just not fair. I don't understand. And I really didn't understand. But I had read this book called Get Out of Your Your Head or something like that by Jenny, whatever. But out and I don't mean whatever, like I'm negating the book. The book is amazing. And if you get a chance to read it, if I remember to link the book description in the description tab of this video, then I hope every person that watches this video reads or skims or goes through and finds a section that really relates to them. Because while I was in my moment, I was reading this chapter on just breaking those toxic, negative self-talk traits that you might have or or things that you might say to yourself. And and it was talking about how Satan will will use negative self-talk the thoughts that you have that are all negative are mostly satan and i know we could say mental warfare or whatever else but she in her book she discussed how he will try to make you live in that perpetual cycle of just always thinking negative thoughts just like you're it's on a loop so you are just sitting there and it's like you're not good enough you're not good enough you're not you know you are good enough. You are good enough. You are good enough. You are good enough. I do that because it's my two to one thing or whatever. And I really want, I really feel like every negative thought needs like two additional positive thoughts because it takes more of a positive thought to negate one negative thing. Because you notice that when someone says something mean to you, you will remember it. And sometimes it will replay in your mind. But every time you think it, you have to think two positive things that negate that. So if you're saying, you're not enough, then two times you would say, I am enough. And you could even say, I am enough because God created me, whatever it is. But you have to like hit it head on. In the book, she talked about imagining something like a purple, purple dinosaur with pink spots and a, and a yellow tail or something like close your eyes and take a moment and just think. And imagine a purple dinosaur with pink dots and an orange tail. It wasn't that, but it was something like that that she said. So you take a moment and you do that. And she's like, just as you just imagined this unrealistic item or inanimate object is the same way that you can negate those negative thoughts that you're thinking in your mind. So while you're saying you're not enough, you could literally think back and say, I am enough. I am enough. And I do that because sometimes when you watch videos and people start saying negative things like, oh, you hear all of these negative things, they will go back over and they will say something inspirational, but it won't be enough. It'll be like a couple sentences in, in regards to the, to the three or 10 negative things that they've already said. And so I don't want to be the person who perpetuates that cycle and that really just leans into the world and I say it like that because in the world there's so much negativity and it's always constantly trying to tell us that we're not good enough even though we are good enough I mean we're good enough because God created us we're good enough because we are trying we are doing better because we want to be better and sometimes I think we forget how amazing we are we forget how how amazing God is let me just put it that way. And there's nothing that you can do in your life that will ever make God stop loving you. That's something that I always tell my daughter. And I feel like it's something that's really important for all of us to remember. There's nothing that we could possibly do that will ever make God stop loving us. We might be hard on ourselves or we might prejudge other people or be like feeling a certain type of way about certain situations, but we are not God. God is the one who gives us grace and who has mercy on us. He's the one whose love never, never ends. He always loves us, no matter what we do. And sometimes we forget it. Sometimes we might be beating up on ourselves and just be like, 
Like for me, the thing that kept making me feel a certain type of way is I knew better and I still overlooked certain situations in the scenario that I was in in my life. And I let things slide because I was so busy, but I really just truly, I didn't even take a moment to, to give the person any real attention. Like, and not saying that that's a good thing. I just, and not saying on either end, it's a good thing. I'm just saying that for me, I didn't have enough attention to really even be able to focus on anybody else. And so for me, it wasn't just that I just didn't respect myself. I just really didn't have enough time. And I don't think I was in a season of my life where I was willing to give enough time to anybody else anyways. And I really didn't feel like I was healed enough to be in a situation anyways. So for me, that's why I think so many people stress waiting until you're ready because you will you will settle for things that you don't even know you're settling for. And I know that sounds crazy and you're probably like, what? I know what I'm not going to settle for. Yeah, you know, but you don't know what other things are going to come at you. You don't know how someone else's personality is going to be. You don't know, even if someone's a nice person, a mean person, in between, indifferent, whatever, everybody is going to try to get as have to put in as less effort as they need to so if there's an area that you miss because you have so much on your mind because you're focused on healing because and I'm not saying you're going to be completely healed when you get in a relationship I'm saying that you heal as much as you possibly can and the person who truly is going to love you is going to heal you the rest of the way and I don't mean that you go into a relationship broken I mean that you heal everything that you possibly can And there will be certain areas you will never be perfectly healed. There will be certain things that God will be constantly working on, breaking off of you or healing or or pressure, like putting pressure on so that God can make you stronger in that area so that you will be able to make it through the next season. And so for me, honestly, when God told me to wait three to four months before dating or talking to anyone, I should have listened. I didn't listen because I felt like I was healed. I felt like what is like, why would I wait? It doesn't make any sense to wait, even though I'm usually super obedient. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like Satan because of the type of dreams that I was having. And because I just, I don't know. I have no idea what made me literally feel like being disobedient or just (laughs) doing whatever. Like, I don't know what it was. It just, something in me it it fed something in me that I thought wasn't a part of me anymore if that makes any sense I know it sounds like weird and crazy but I had this like weird I don't know what to describe it it was really something like whatever it was in this person or in this thing that I wanted that I I felt like I couldn't wait for it definitely was feeding something in me like I don't I don't think it was something good I don't know what it was, but it really, it really played on whatever that thing was that I needed or felt like I I needed or wanted or that I was, I used to be attracted to. It's like, I don't know if it's because it was something that I used to settle for. And so it was just normal. So it felt comfortable or what, but I don't know. It was this weird pull that it had on me that it just made me feel like I couldn't wait. And I think it was Satan toying with me, trying to trying to really make me feel a certain type of way, trying to to make me insecure or make me feel like I had to rush into something. Anytime you feel rushed to Satan, just know that any time it doesn't matter what it is. Anytime you feel like you can't take a second to think about it, it is Satan because he knows that if you rush into it, Sometimes once you start, it's hard to stop. Sometimes once he gets like a foothold in there, then he can ease his way right on back into your subconscious or your physical or mental or spiritual health. He really will take any opportunity to try to break you, especially if you're walking in your purpose. So you have to be, you have to look out for yourself. And I don't mean you got to be rude and nasty to anyone. Always lead with love and kindness. I mean that you need to protect yourself at all costs. Protect your heart at all costs. Do whatever it takes to fight against Satan. Because he will do whatever it takes to break you. 
He will use whoever he can. Some people don't even know that they're being used. That's how that's how sneaky he is. It could be a really good person. And Satan could use that to distract you from your purpose and to make you make other people feel like they don't need to believe in themselves because you start doubting yourself. He could use that person to make you start to doubt if good people even actually exist. He can use that person to to show you that hope doesn't doesn't matter and faith doesn't matter because what's the use of having hope and faith if every person is going to treat you like this? He could make you feel like you wanted to be hopeful and you felt like God told you that he was going to be there with you every step of the way, but you still got hurt. That doesn't mean that you're not going to get hurt and things aren't going to happen. That means that when you need to be picked back up, God will be right there with his hand out, lifting you back up. He will take you through whatever it is that you need to go through so that you can be stronger on the other end. He will be there. He will be your strength when you're weak. Even when you feel like you can't move on. The other day when I was in my mood, I don't know if I'll post the video from yesterday or not because I was real weak, but I feel like it's important to show me in every stage so that people can see how God moves in your life. Even when it looked like I wasn't going to make it out, God will always make a way. And I really, Satan was beating me pretty bad. Like, I wouldn't say beating because, you know, it's a fixed fight and we already won. <laughs> but no, seriously, like God already is winning every war. So it's not that you're going to lose. You just have to make it through the war. If you give up, you're letting Satan win. If you keep pushing through, God is going to carry you anywhere that you need to go. He will take you to every level that he intended you to go to. He will bless you with whatever it is that he intends to bless you with. He will remove and add things into your life that need to be there. People in your life who need to be removed, people in your life who need to be added to your life, he will have those people in your life. He will do whatever necessary to make sure that his child is good. And I'm telling you, I was so weak. I literally felt like I wanted to end up on the floor. Like I wanted to just lay on the floor and cry. And this is just me being real and transparent because I'm not going to pretend like I'm always like this. <laughs> I really have some moments sometimes. And so I really felt so weak. I wanted to lay down on the floor and just cry. I wanted to give up and I could hear God and I could hear like my, I could hear my inner voice. I could hear, I could hear all the people who read the book and the people who we're talking about how my story really has helped them and inspired them. And when they see my posts on my sites and things like that and how inspiring it is and how some people want to give up and they, they hear it or they see it or they watch a video or they read a book and it really does help pull them through and it really does help them keep going. And I could, I could think about my daughter and all the generations to come and it was like something in me was like, you can't give up. No matter what's going on, no matter how badly you feel at this moment, no matter how badly you want to just give up, no matter how badly it feels like there's no way that you could see how you're going to make it through this, no matter how badly you were treated or you know taken advantage of or how many things you settled for or how many ba boundaries you've been bended or how much you lowered your standards, you cannot give up. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. It matters what you're going to do from this moment going forward. It matters that you're going to follow behind God. It matters that you're going to continue to follow behind God and walk by faith and not by sight. It matters that as long as you're faithful, as long as you're walking in your, in your purpose, as long as you're doing the things that God intended you to do, you will always be able to use be used as a vessel. You will always be strong enough to make it through whatever any person tries to put you through. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how nice they are. It doesn't matter how mean they are. It doesn't matter if they're the the king, a uh, queen. It doesn't matter like a literal king or queen. It doesn't matter who this person is. They will never be God. There's nothing that they could ever do to break you. There's nothing that you could ever do that would make you not good enough for God at all. And you have to remember that no matter how disappointed you are in yourself, no matter how many things you settled for, no matter what you've done in the past, you cannot allow any one person, any two people, any 100 people, it doesn't matter how many people it is, pretend that they have God's position in your life because no one will ever be God. 
It doesn't matter what you do. If God's grace is seeing you through it, if his mercy is bringing you through it, you can continue on. It doesn't matter how weak you feel in the moment. Call on God and he will give you everything you need, the strength that you need to be able to pull through. I literally felt like there's no way I could stand. My body felt so weak from being emotionally exhausted. Like I literally felt like I didn't know how I was going to continue on. I kind of just, and this is just me being real. I kind of felt like, what's the point? Let me just give up right now. I just, I want to, I don't want to continue. I just want to stop at this moment. And I couldn't stop. When I thought about all those people, when I thought about everything that God brought me through, when I thought about all the people who are looking up to me and the people who are coming behind me, I know that they're waiting on me and I have to be the person that walks in my purpose. I have to be the person that pushes through this. I have to continue to stand up. I have to stand. God was telling me that I did not bring you this far for you to lay down, just lay down in this moment for you to allow someone to make you feel less than what I created you to be. I did not bring you this far for you to give up now. If you want to be taken to another level, there's pressure that you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to go through breaking. You're going to have to go through all of these things. These trials and tribulations are meant to to bring you through it. They're meant to build you, to strengthen you. And you're not going to be strong just with an easy life with rainbows and unicorns. You're not going to be strong with me just giving you everything that you want. There are going to be things that you want that are not going to be good for you. No matter how good they look, no matter how amazing they seem, no matter how beautiful it is, it will never be what God wants it to be in your life. It will never, never be what God intended for your life if that's not what God is allowing you to have, if that's not what God is telling you yes to. If God is saying no to something, know that it's for your own benefit. It's not because he just wants to be some mean kid who just is sitting down, looking at you, pointing his finger like, ha, 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 I showed you this and you can't have it. God's intention is never to show you something, to destroy you, to to bring you down, to discourage you. His His intention is for you to live the best, most peaceful, joyous life that you could possibly live. Will there be storms and trials and tribulations? Absolutely. But he will be there with you every step of the way. He will carry you through. He will be your strength when you're weak. He will be everything that you possibly need. There is no one person or thing that could ever fill the position of God. There's nothing that could ever happen in your life that will take the place of God. There's nothing that will ever happen in your life that will ever take you off of the path that God has positioned you on. The purpose that God has for your life will still be the purpose that God has for your life, regardless of who's there or who's not. Any person who's meant to be there, there is nothing that you can do to stop that person from being a part of your life. If that's what God intended, you don't have to do the most. You don't have to be extra and you don't have to be somebody that you're not. You only have to be who you are at your best. That's the only thing you have to do. And the job that's for you is going to come just like that. The person that's for you is just going to come just like that at the appointed time. And I know people hear appointed time and they don't like to think of an appointed time. While you're waiting, be grateful, be gracious, serve in your purpose, be serving, do the things that you love doing. Do something for somebody else. Don't just sit around with your hand out expecting everything to just come to you. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are or non-beautiful you are. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're the cream of the crop or you're the lowest thing on the earth. It doesn't matter what or who you are. God can still use you and God will still use you. And there is somebody for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. And you only need one person. There's more than one person for you. (laughs) There, There are people that God positions in your life that are for you. The friends, a potential partner, a partner, whatever else, a job. There, there are people who are supposed to be a part of your life for your season, for your entire life. And I'm not saying just people come in for a season and they're out. I just mean some people are in your life because they have something that they they contribute. They have something that they add to your life. They might be the person who says the one thing that you need to hear so that you can continue in your purpose. And you didn't even know. God just placed them right in the right position. And maybe your lives are different. So you end up doing something else and maybe you don't keep in contact or something like that. But that has nothing to do with that person being good, being a good or bad person. That means that that person served their purpose. Everybody has a purpose in this life and things that they are supposed to be doing to contribute to the world. And if you are not contributing and you're, you're pulling from the world, 
world, then you are not living in your purpose. You're not doing the things that you need to do. And some people will make it seem like you have to be an entrepreneur or you have to work a nine to five or you have to do all of these things. You can be a stay at home mom and dad, mom or dad. You could be a, the grandparent who took in all of these adopted kids. You could or took in, you know, your children's kids or whatever else, whoever you are, everything that you're doing is for a purpose. Everything that you're doing that's good is of God. Everything, everything that you are doing, it does not have to be a position or a title. It doesn't have to be a mom or dad. It could be an aunt. It could be an uncle. It could be any person. And in conclusion, it's important for us to listen and speak up. If you don't have time for a relationship or if you don't have time for certain stuff in your life, do not prematurely walk into a situation where you are destroying yourself or you are going to hurt yourself or hurt the person because you might block off other people who are supposed to be in your life because you're not ready and pushing them away will make them feel like they don't respect you or make them feel like they're not good enough when they are. If you feel like there's certain things or standards that you have, don't listen to other people telling you that it's too much. As long as it's a standard that really makes sense, don't make preferences and then say, well, they didn't take two steps, so they're not good enough for me. Like, don't do that. Don't be extra. <laughs> really just lead with love and kindness and the standards that you have. Remind yourself why you have those standards. If you want consistency and communication, that's exactly what you need. Because consistency breeds trust and trust breeds an honest person who is reliant, who who is about that life to me when someone is consistent, when they are really walking in being leading their life, when they are intentional with the things that they have in their life and because they are intentional, they are being consistent. Then that's something that's super important. That's not a preference. That's a standard. Someone who is inconsistent is untrustworthy. They are not someone that I could see as a potential partner or a friend in my life. They might be an acquaintance. I might be nice to them, but that's all they are. I could not allow any person to be with me who is inconsistent and doesn't communicate. Communication is so important to me because when I'm talking to my friends, I want them to know that I'm listening to them. I want them to know that I hear them. I want them to know that they could talk to me about anything and I'm not judging them. I'm not pretending to be something else. I'm not pretending to be God because God is the only one that can be God. I'm just being the best version of myself. And in order for me to do that, I need to be, have open communication, have open dialogue. I need to make sure that I'm listening intentively. I am, I'm being the person that I would want to be my friends to be to me. And when I'm talking to someone or getting to know someone, it's not my job to make someone communicate or to get someone to be consistent either they are or they aren't and that's it just is what it is I I mean if someone's not ready then that's probably not the person for me because I'm intentionally dating and so unless they're intentionally dating with the purpose of eventually being something else not saying that we would make it to that level who knows only God knows but <laughs> but seriously you have to treat your life like it's your life, your only life. You only get this life. You only get this, this, <laughs> oh my gosh, I cannot believe I was about to start doing it. I was about to say you only have one shot and one opportunity. <laughs> Would you capture it or just let it slip? But no, seriously. <laughs> oh my gosh, now it's playing in my head. Now all I can think of is that. Mm -mm -mm. But seriously. You have to take your life serious. You have to really be intentional with your life. You have to be willing to listen to what God is telling you and speak up for yourself. You might not feel, you might feel like you're doing the most or it's, it's too much or, you know, the person is not going to be willing to do this or whatever. If they're not willing to do that, then they don't respect you. And you have to respect and honor yourself enough to say that this person, even though your ego is hurt, is not that interested. Or or they feel like you're not about that life, so they want to try to test you. Now, if they step up after that, that's great. If they don't, then just keep going on with your life because you have things to do. You don't have any time to waste because you could be gone at the second. You could be gone in an hour. You could be gone tomorrow. 
So we can't waste time worrying about what someone else is planning on doing, which I think that was like one of the issues that I had. I really was just like, I got a lot to do. I can't, <laughs> I can't take the time to just, you know, I don't want to say babysit someone else because that sounds degrading. I don't, I just didn't have enough energy or focus to put into that. And I think God always knew that I wasn't going to have that, that focus and that time in my life. And waiting the three to four months would have gave me the, the time and the energy to be able to do stuff like that and, <laughs> and really see what it is that I truly want without just saying, okay, these are my standards. I can go back and remember why they're my standards, why they're so important to me. I could really nip things in the bud right away instead of waiting around because I mean, I didn't wait. I just got so busy. I just didn't really have any time or, or energy to put into it. And so I know the other person was probably thinking, oh yeah, I got a, a really naive person here <laughs> who's just going to fall for anything. But I mean, that's on you. That's not what I believe I am. So you think whatever you want to think. And I know that I'm good enough. I know that I'm worthy. I know that I'm everything God created me to be. I know that I honor and respect myself and I will continue to do that regardless of what mistakes I've made in the past and what I did or didn't do the right way right away. I know that inconsistency is unacceptable. No communication is unacceptable and my life is not a swinging door. I've had enough people do that in my past. And so either you're about that life or you're not. And so <laughs> in conclusion, like I already said that, but seriously, take your life serious. Do not allow any person, if you get busy like I did, and you really just completely don't even notice that you lower, unintentionally lowered your standards because you just haven't had enough time or energy to put into anyone else, then now is the time. There, it's never too late for you to honor and respect yourself. It's not. No matter what you don't do, no matter what things someone else got away with, it might be too late for that person. And you might feel badly and just be like, oh my gosh, it could have been this way. Could have, should have, would have. You can't look back in the past because that's how Satan tries to manipulate you and make you feel like you're not good enough for what God has for your life. You cannot keep looking back at the mistakes of your past and act as if you're going to be a better person tomorrow. You need to just continuously look forward. You can learn from your past. You can take those experiences and learn ways to do better in the future. That's what I'm doing. And now that you know what you need to do, do it. Don't hesitate. Don't think about, well, I couldn't do this because of this. No excuses. Stop with the excuses. Stop looking at yourself in a negative light. You are beautiful. You are strong. You are everything you were supposed to be. And anything that happened that didn't work out the right way obviously wasn't God. Or anything that you did that you made a mistake on or things that you've done wrong, learn from and know that you could do better going forward. You do not have to be perfect. Perfect. You do not have to be the person that just always has standards and always does the right thing. You saw what I did. I, I was a hot mess. I really just um, thought I was ready, <laughs> but I really did all the wrong things. And it's OK. It is OK. I promise you it's OK. And it's going to be OK. And it might suck. It might not feel the greatest because you know better, but you live and you learn. Now that you know better, do better. Like Maya Angelou said, you do the best that you can until you know better. And once you know better, you do better. So this moment going forward, do better. It doesn't matter if you make another mistake in the future. You're human. Of course, you're going to mess up. But don't beat yourself up about it. Don't allow Satan to use your mind and your spirit to make you feel like you're not good enough for God to use you or you will never be able to have certain things in your life because you made mistakes. You will be able to have anything God blesses you with and accept it with open arms. Don't feel like you're not good enough to accept those things. Don't feel like because you made a mistake that you can't do better. Don't feel like just because someone came in and they, they felt like they didn't want to appreciate you, you're not worthy. You are absolutely worthy. And how you can nip that in the bud is it might sound drastic, but the standards that you have Keep the standards, no matter what your friends, family, anybody else tells you. They might be willing to bend to someone else's will, but you will not be bending to anyone's will but God. And so when people come in and they try you and they, they really aren't about that life, then you know what your life is about. You know who you are. You know what direction you're headed. You know your purpose. You know, And it, even if you don't know your purpose yet, 
you follow God and he will show you what your purpose is. It will be that thing that you are amazingly good at out of nowhere. You don't even know that it's a real gift. You really just feel like it's just something that you do that's real. you're really good at. And <laughs> and God can use anybody. It doesn't matter what type of person you used to be. It doesn't matter if you were the, the worst parent. It doesn't matter if, if you were somewhere and you made a huge mistake in public, wherever else. It doesn't matter what you've done. You are good enough. And God can use that. He can use that for the next person who's going to be egotistical or, or who's going to be arrogant or who's going to be really feeling like, and why did I just feel like I got indigestion right there? But <laughs> no one needed to know that, but it's already on there. I'm not going to cut it out. It's too late. And so, <laughs> so yeah, just focus on what it is that you're doing that God intends for you to do in your life. And any mistakes that you made, any standards that you've lowered, it is okay. From this moment going forward, such your standards. Sometimes it might be too late for the person because they already feel like you just going to settle for anything. But that's okay. That just means that that's not going to be the person for you because you need someone that's going to respect and honor you. And in order for them to do that, you have to stick to your standards. You cannot bend for anyone, no matter how fine they are, or how smooth of a talker they are or whatever else, or what perks are in a job. If you really feel like you're lowering yourself for this job, then it's not something that you can do. I'm not saying just go quit because you feel like quitting because you don't like your job. I'm saying pray to God, make sure that you he's telling you what it is that you need to do. Not just don't make up in your mind and say, I want to quit this job. And then you talk to God and it feels like he's saying yes, because you really don't like your job. Like, don't do that. Do not. <laughs> don't just quit your job just because you hear other people online saying it or because someone else said, oh, if you don't like this, you know, you really need to focus on what it is that God is telling you to do and follow his lead. Really believe in yourself and know that you are good enough. Know that you are everything you are supposed to be. For men, the women that don't appreciate you, know that there's going to be a woman that does appreciate you. It might not come when you want it, but it'll always be on time. Every, all of those little cliche, like biblical or, or Christian terms just keep popping in my head every time I do a video. And I'm trying not to be corny or cliche, but it really is so true. <laughs> and so for real, like seriously, do not beat yourself up. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I'm perfect. I really do mess up a lot. And God is always there like, oh, you made a another mistake. I got you. <laughs> and I might make mistakes. And sometimes I'm really hard on myself because I know better. And I don't intentionally do it. Sometimes it's just like literally like a horrid habit or it could be it could just be like I just went to do something quickly. And that was just the first thing that I did. It's not that I intentionally go making mistakes. I really just unintentionally make mistakes or I I don't give things the, the right attention that they need. And so that's something that I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on making sure that I'm listening to God and I'm doing what I have to do on my end because that's everything that I can do. That's everything that you can do. If you're being the best that you can, know that you are doing the best that you can. Do not allow someone else to make you feel badly because you didn't have standards when you met them or make someone make you make you feel badly because you didn't stand up for yourself or speak up for yourself in that moment. When you get the next opportunity, speak up for yourself. It's never too late for you to respect and honor yourself. Don't feel like it's too late for you to say, I'm not okay with this. It's it's always okay for you to, to speak up for yourself, to respect yourself and honor yourself because you honoring and respecting yourself is you honoring and respecting God. God did not make you to settle for less than what he intends for your life. And so any person that's trying to make you settle for something less is not respecting God or you. So <laughs> stop beating yourself up. It's okay. It, everything is going to work out. Everything is going to be okay. It might not feel like it in this moment, but you will make it through.